Okay, so most of you will already be familiar with the concept of masking, but Cavalry does things slightly differently. And this opens up some interesting workflows. The key thing to understand is that any shape can also be used as a mask on another shape. So let's just sort of dive in and show you what that means. I've got a rectangle, I've got an ellipse, and I've got a blob. The blob is just a, a shape that we've drawn with a, with a pencil, so an editable shape. But let's just start by masking our rectangle with the ellipse. Now there's a couple of ways we can do this, but let's just start by double clicking the rectangle to load its UI into the attribute editor. Click over to the mask tab, and then we're just gonna drag a connection from the ellipse here and drop that onto its masks attribute. As you can see straight away, that is now clipping our rectangle. Now we're currently set to intersect, but we can change the mode, the Boolean mode here. And um, let's swap that to subtract. And as you can see, anything within the ellipse is being clipped. So where this gets interesting is we can also use the ellipse again as a mask on the blob. Let's do that this time through the, uh, just through the project window. So again, we'll just pick up a connection from our ellipse. This time we'll just drop onto the blob in our project window and we'll just go masks, connect to new index. Now, as you can see, that is now masking, but just because this is defaulting to intersect, you can see we're already creating quite an interesting effect. Um, let's just go onto our blob and swap that over to subtract. So the two are the same. As you can see, we're now masking those two shapes. So what's great about this is that there's no real need to create pre-comps of your masks in order to reuse them on other shapes. You can just keep this, you can keep your hierarchy nice and flat. So you can just connect the same thing or other things to as many things as you like. And then any changes you make to, to this shape, you know, and it might be that you want to add a noise to this and um, you know, any deformers will, will travel through to all the rest of your shapes. So it just means you can keep your scene nice and clean. Um, there's also nothing to say that a shape being masked can also be used as a mask itself. So just for clarity, let's just disconnect the um, ellipse from the blob. And then this time, let's use the rectangle, which is already being masked by the ellipse. Let's use that rectangle as a mask on the blob. Now, by default, we turn off the visibility of any shapes that are connected as masks. Let's just turn that back on. And again, you can see we're sort of getting some fairly interesting results just simply from doing that little setup. So you can also preview masks in the viewport. Um, if you toggle on this mask overview option, whenever you select a shape which has a mask associated with it, you'll get this kind of green overlay. And basically, what is the green area represents the zone in which your shape will be visible. And then also while not exclusive to masking, you can also switch shapes to a wireframe mode. To do that, just right click and then select wireframe. As you can see, that's now being displayed as a wireframe. Let's just turn this off. That wireframe won't render, um, at, it won't appear in renders. So I've just showed you there just connecting one mask to one shape, but of course, any shape can have multiple ma multiple masks on it with different uh, different modes, whether it be subtract, intersect, etc. So things can get quite interesting. Okay, so let's look at putting some of those ideas into practice in a more kind of real world situation. We've just picked a file here that's um, something that came to us really from the uh, beta or our, our Discord channel. And the reason we picked this out is because this file came to us and I think we're, there are about 30 layers in here. And we've managed to reduce it down to six in Cavalry using the mask and the idea that you can use the same mask on multiple shapes. It's a very simple scene. It's literally just this blue rectangle that moves across. And all that's happening really is that the rectangle is masking the text and the icon revealing those underneath it. So if we just go back to um, the start of this, just to set this up quickly. So you can see we've got, um, if we just turn these off, we've got our text and our icon that are blue. Uh, and just so you know, this is an SVG that's come in and we've turned off the materials here and then overridden the fill color with this one here. 
Uh, we're actually using a scene palette, so you can change these colors and that comes all the way through. We've connected up the rectangle as well. So you can see as you, as you change those colors, no, I've not set this up to animate yet, so you can't see that. Uh, but you get the idea. We can um, let's just go back to our blue. Okay. So all we really want to do here is we want to use our rectangle to mask our white text and icon in order to reveal the uh, blue below. So really simple. Let's just drag our rectangle onto our white text. I know that as a mask. And let's do the same thing for our white icon. Okay. And now as we move our rectangle, you'll see that the white's being revealed or the blue is being revealed because the white is being masked, I should say. So we obviously want our rectangle on in this example. So it can still be on, it can still be visible and used as a mask. So we literally just need to animate this now. So I know this number is minus 440. Let's just drop a key in there. Um, let's try 20. Let's go to zero. Uh, 40. Sorry, we want another key at zero. And then 60, 440. Now, if I just change our background color to white so we can see the full effect, just hit play. You can see we're done. Now let's just tidy up our keys here. So I'm just gonna alt click on these two. And then just cause I wanna be tidy, I'm gonna Z click on these. And then we can just obviously pull out our handles and get the result that we want. Yeah. So it really is that simple. Um, and of course, you could then take this a bit further. We've obviously got this connected up to a, to a scene palette here. So as I say, we can, we can change this and everything updates nicely for us. So you can see our icons pink and the background's pink. You could use this with a color array, for example, and then using dynamic rendering, you could output 10 different versions of this button to send over to a client. So things get really interesting, but I think the key thing is here, we've got five layers rather than the 30 that came to us originally. So it's um, nice and quick. And, and just to get ahead, ahead of the game, um, we don't have uh, feathering yet on masking and we do not have Luma or track mats as yet, um, but those things are on the roadmap. Anyway, enjoy. I hope that uh, helps you get familiar with masking.